Here we go again, people. Let's see if I can make this work better than the first time. Change the setup. Lighting still shit. Phone still works. But let's do this. I figured I would do um, Friday reads as everybody told me it's the easiest and most casual video to make. But obviously I didn't manage to film this by Friday. So as it's almost June, I guess I will do a May wrap up. Tons of disappointing books in May. The first one I read was Henry and Cato by Iris Murdoch. At this point, you should see a picture here, somewhere, ideally here. Um, and if you can, it means that the hours I spent watching tutorial videos on how to use Sony Vegas were worth it. Otherwise, it means I failed again. In that case, just Google it. You know, you can type Iris Murdoch and you will see how the book looks like. But um, let's pretend there's a picture here, okay? This is the fifth novel I've read by her and it was the one I enjoyed least, to be honest. Uh, the story is about two friends, Henry, uh, who is a British young man who built a mediocre life for himself in the States. He holds a teaching position in a Midwestern college and he has a menage a trois with a married couple. When the book opens, he's on his way back to England because after his older brother's death, he inherited the family home, more like a mansion. So he has to deal with his mother, who's a widow, and besides, it doesn't feel like he belongs in England anymore. The other main character is Kato, um, Henry's childhood friend, who has now become a Catholic priest, though he's struggling a bit with his faith after meeting and developing a crush for this, this young rascal nicknamed Beautiful Joe. Uh, it's, it's classic murder, really. There's a kidnapping, a blackmail, a murder, a uh, sex scene, fake identities, and it's, it's all great, but it kind of fell flat in the end for me. I'm not sure if, if it was this book in particular or if Murdoch's novels are all starting to merge together in my mind, which is a possibility. Um, you know, of all the books I've read so far by her, none of them have blown my mind. But it's always a pleasure to pick her up again because she's brilliant and funny. And I guess I just need to find that book that makes me go crazy, you know. The next book I read was A Female Persuasion by Meg Walliter. And I'm not going to talk about this book because I didn't care much for it. I couldn't relate to the characters. I wasn't invested in their story. Uh, I found it pretty forgettable in the end. But it was extremely readable at the same time. Um, and it was by no means a bad book. just didn't resonate with me. But Matthew did a fantastic video review about this book on his channel as part of his uh, Matthew Reed series. Where he vlogs his way through books. Which is quite unique because you feel like you're reading a book with him. Uh, which is great. So make sure to check it out if you want to you know, listen to somebody talk about this book in, in depth. The next book I read was I'll Be Gone in the Dark by Michelle McNamara. I'm a sucker for good true crime. Even though I don't read many books of the genre, I tend to prefer documentaries. But, uh, you know, after the alleged Golden State Killer was arrested last month, everyone just went bananas about this book. So I thought I'd read it, but let me tell you, it's a mess. The timeline is all over the place, so confusing. The book starts in 1981, that is seven years after the East Area Rapist picked his first victim. And it jumps back to present time, then to the 90s or the 80s and so on. It's really confusing, hard to follow. And besides, the author unfortunately died before finishing the book, which was completed by the editors based on McNamara's notes. And that really affected the writing. Uh, besides, maybe the author would have arranged the chapters in a different way. Who knows? So as much as it is an admirable achievement, which spiked the interest about this serial killer, leading to his arrest in the end, um, it's very uneven and choppy. After that, I read The Sluts by Dennis Cooper. I discovered Cooper thanks to Adam, who always makes sure to show us the best stuff on his channel, like the Japanese couple who vomit raw eggs into each other's mouths. If you haven't watched that video, well, just don't, okay? Uh, the Sluts is a bizarre structure because it's it revolves around this website for a gay escort service. It's a platform where people leave reviews after their encounters with prostitutes. It's like a slutty version of TripAdvisor, like Whore Advisor. So inexplicably, people start getting obsessed over this one escort called Brad, whom everybody and their mothers want to have a go at. Um, things escalate pretty quickly. Um, and people start claiming to have met Brad and to have done this and that to him. There's a moderator who tries to shed a light on what's true and what's fake. Um, there's a pimp called Brian who claims to be in a relationship with Brad. And there's even a girl who claims to be pregnant with Brad's baby. It's it's pretty wild. 
Um, so you try to navigate your way through this web of lies, but it gets more intricate by the minute. Uh, there are at least two alleged murders, um, at least 20 people who claim to be who they're not. Uh, it's, it's, it's intense. My favorite parts were the, the group of people who are obsessed with Nick Carter, so they create this website where they fantasize about killing him. And, and there's um, the guy who has a fetish for young teenagers with broken legs. It's, it's yeah, it's, it's insane. <laughs> to recover from the sluts and to cleanse the palates, I read Under the Greenwood Tree by Thomas Hardy, a slim novel and definitely a minor Hardy for me. Uh, it's, it's the story of Dick Dewey, a church musician who falls in love with the new school mistress. Uh, it's just a fickle and vain girl dying for, the, for a bit of attention. Uh, apparently it's supposed to be one of the few, if not the only, idyllic novels by Hardy, but I found the ending quite discouraging nonetheless. The next book I read was Spring by Kolo Knausgård, and I'm going to say up front that I really love Knausgård, so I'm aware that my views are a bit biased when it comes to him, so take my words with a grain of salt. Um, I guess he's one of those authors you either love or hate, since he's a white male living author, who wrote a 3,000 pages autobiography at the age of 40. So, yeah. Spring is the third installment in his Seasons Quartet, and before you say anything, no, he didn't copy Alice Myth because he wrote Autumn in 2015 and finished the series by 2016. Um, the idea behind this project is to write short essays uh, for his unborn daughter, uh, to whom he wants to explain the world. Um, so he describes and analyzes seemingly trivial objects and everyday situations like plastic bags, uh, toothbrushes, or dressing up as Santa Claus to surprise his children, or visiting his mother in northwest Norway. But it's just a pretense to reminisce about the past, uh, describe our society, and, you know, just explore the difficult reality of being a parent. But Spring is actually quite different from the first two volumes because is not a collection of essays, but a proper novella where we follow Kolova for a whole day, um, where he takes his youngest daughter to visit um, her mother in hospital. Because at this point, Linda is has been hospitalized for several months um, and is now recovering. And if you've read book number two in the My Struggle series, you will know that she's bipolar. So basically, we, we see more the the Knausgård father, rather than the writer, um, you know, he has to take care of four children, uh, trying to maintain a semblance of normality in their lives. And it's rather quite touching, and it's the one I enjoyed most so far. After that, I read The Pisces by Melissa Brother. If you don't know who Brother is, uh, she's an American writer and poet who rose to fame in 2015 after she had opened an anonymous Twitter account back in 2012 called um, So Sad Today where she would post ironic tweets about depression, love, anxiety, uh, sex, death, and so on. In 2016, she published her first collection of essays uh, with the same name, So Sad Today, where she explored the same themes from depression to illness, to obsessive relationships, to eating disorders, to anxiety, and so on. Um, and I found it very brilliant. It was genuine. Um, it, it was really good. Um, you know, she doesn't sugarcoat it. So when I heard she would publish her first novel, I was really excited. But sadly, um, this book is, is not as good as I expected. The Pisces is the story of Lucy, a 38-year-old woman who has been trying for years to finish her PhD thesis on the Greek poet Sappho. She breaks up with a boyfriend and she moves to Venice, LA um, to babysit her sister's dog. Um, she starts attending this therapy group uh, for people who suffer from love addiction. Um, so we follow her through a series of Tinder dates that end in disaster, uh, until she meets this 20-something surfer uh, called Theo, or at least she thinks he's a surfer because he meets him at night while, while he takes a swim, uh, but it turns out he's a merman. Yes, a merman. So obviously things cannot end well. Uh, personally, my favorite part was when she has to get ready for this Tinder date, um, who explicitly told her he wants to have anal sex. Can you say anal sex on booktube? Well, there you go, I've said it. Um, so she gets in the tub and she tries to give herself an enema with a shower head, but it doesn't really work. So she literally puts her fingers in a bum um, to try to get the stool out. 
uh, but she only manages to break it in half. It, it was pretty intense, yeah. Um, you know, it, it was not bad, it was not bad, but uh, I felt like it was reading the same book again. Uh, you know, depression, anxiety, uh, love addiction. I just wonder if Brother has anything new to say at this point. Uh, besides, it looks like a book Lena Dunham would love. Ugh. As for what I'm currently reading, um, buddy reading The Absolutist by John Boyne uh, with Sean. And I'm really excited because it's my first John Boyne and I'm really enjoying it so far. Um, also, I've just started the latest book by Lars Sobi Christensen. Uh, it's called Bienspur, uh, which means the traces of the city or something like that. Please, Celia, correct me if I'm wrong. Um, it's the first one in a trilogy. It's set in Oslo um, and it's about a married couple, Mai, who's an accountant for the Red Cross, and Eval, who works for um, an advertising company, and their son, Jesper, who is um, quite a difficult boy, really silent and withdrawn. Uh, there's also an, a lonely Italian pianist who got stuck in Norway during the war. Uh, yeah, so it's really interesting. But as I'm reading this in Norwegian, it will probably take me a month or even more to finish it. But what are you going to do? Anyway, hopefully this won't take me a whole week to edit. Um, I want to thank all the people who subscribe to my channel. I have no idea why anyone would do that, but thank you nonetheless. Um, now I'll just go back outside to take care of my garden. Because if you didn't know, that's the hip thing of BookTube now. If you don't have a garden, you're a nobody. Bye.